and advocacy organization. I am hopefully also or will be a full-time law student this coming fall. Thank you. We'd like to begin today's event with our national anthem. And for that, I would like to call Yara Awad. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and our rockets burned flare the bombs bursting in our gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet Thank you very much. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Yara. Today's event is about the Muslim American community, a community that contributes to our society in every way, from engineers to doctors, from academics, professors, to military servants. Today is about them and their services, which are hardly recognized. I stand before you as a proud Muslim American, the son of a proud Muslim American who served this country's military for 10 years, seven and a half in the United States Navy and two and a half in the Army. A man who is a United States service disabled veteran a man who continued to serve his country as a civilian engineer at the Department of Defense and was awarded a patent in his name for inventing an interactive routing system for the U.S. military. These are the types of American Muslim men and women who are hardly mentioned, whose stories are hardly told. Less than two weeks ago, I gave the sermon here on Friday at the Dover Mosque. And after that sermon, we went down to the funeral home by the Dover Air Force Base. And there I led the funeral prayer for a young Muslim American who gave his life for this country. And as his family watched his motionless body with tears in their eyes, I thought to myself, what do people think about them when they walk on the streets and see them in their religious and traditional garments? Do they understand, do they know the sacrifices that those Muslim American families made for this country? That is why we are here today. Before I call our next speakers, I would like to recognize some of our elected officials that are here today. From the representatives, Representative Bombach, Bentz, Heffernan, 
Hensley, Jakes, Longhurst, Osinski, Party, Ramon, Viola, Williams, Shortskoff, from the from the Senators, Clowder, Hansen, Henry, Lavelle, Lopez, McBride, Poor, Townsend. I would also like to recognize Laura from Senator Carper's office and Desiree from Senator Kuhn's office and Connie Mallenberg, the former Republican chair. And forgive me if I pronounce anybody's name wrong. For our next part, I would like to call to the stage. Okay, I'd like to add Senator Del Calo and Representative, Representative Potter, and obviously our Governor and Lieutenant Governor. And even though everybody that's elected will not get a chance to speak today, it means the world to us that they come out and show their support for the Muslim American community of Delaware. I would now like to call some of the religious leaders of the state. Rabbi Michael Beals, the acting chair of the governor's appointed Delaware Council on Faith-Based Partnerships and president of the Delaware Association of Rabbis. Rabbi Micah Becker Klein, Temple Beth El. Imam Sheikh Abdul Hadi from the Islamic Society of Delaware. Reverend Cynthia Robinson, Newark United Church of Christ. Salam Aleikum. Shalom Aleichem. Peace be unto you. Same to you. Thank you. So I already got two of my three yarmulkes exposed. The third one is for 13 years, I've been the rabbi of Congregation Beth Shalom in Wilmington. I love Irfan Patel, the interfaith chair of the Islamic Society of Delaware, who reached out to me about today. He, his family, and his friends have been our synagogue's guests at Shabbat Sabbath services, Sukkot festivals, and even our interfaith model Seder for Passover last month. If Irfan Patel asks me to do anything on behalf of the Muslim community of Delaware, I do it. Thank you. Aside from my friendship for Irfan, I did need to ask myself, why exactly am I here addressing you this afternoon? I came up with three possible answers. One, Abraham, Ibrahim, peace be unto him, was the father of the Jewish, the Christian, and the Muslim people. His son Isaac was our next patriarch, and Ishmael was the Muslim people next patriarch. That makes Jews and Muslims cousins. Yes. <laughs> and when your cousin asks for help, you help your family. <laughs> Second possible reason why I'm addressing you this afternoon 36 times, 36 times in the Torah it states, you were slaves unto Pharaoh in Egypt. Therefore, you will treat the widow, the orphan, and the stranger in your midst with kindness. I am the Lord your God. The widow, the orphan, and the stranger are the holy trinity of the Torah. They stand for anyone who is marginalized, 
In truth, it shames me as a loyal American who loves his country passionately that Muslims in America are sometimes made to feel marginalized, necessitated, necessitating rallies such as this one. And my Torah, my Jewish faith demands that I stand with the marginalized. So he nani, here I am. My prayer is that in times to come, rallies such as this one will not be needed, as all Muslims will be made to feel truly at home in America as they deserve. Thank you. If I needed a third reason to justify why I'm standing before you today, I'd like to quote Martin Neumuller, the great Protestant theologian of the Holocaust, who wrote, first they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. In the years leading up to the Holocaust, there was simply no one to speak up for the Jews. And as a result of that worldwide silence, including silence in this country. Adolf Hitler thought he had the world's permission to exterminate six million of our people, a catastrophe we marked only two days ago with Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. So now, when members of Delaware's Muslim community asked me to stand with them, with my own people's recent experience of the Holocaust to guide me, how can I morally or ethically do anything but stop what I am doing and join my Muslim brothers and sisters in solidarity? To do anything less would be to forget my own people's history. And as the philosopher George Santiano wrote, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. For all these reasons, and especially in the name of personal friendship, I stand with Delaware's Muslim community today. O say shalom bim ramav, may the one who makes peace in the heavens, hu ya say shalom, may God make peace upon us. We all call Yisrael, and all people struggle with God. The call Yosvei and all who dwell on earth, and let us say a heartfelt amen. amen. A great honor to follow on my colleague, Rabbi Michael Beals. And I want to say what an honor it is to be here today, both with the governor, lieutenant governor, and our attorney general, and so many other of our representatives here today. What I know is not very different from what Rabbi Beal shared, that when that call came out, and I remember not too long ago, together with the Imam behind me over here, we were in the church, and we were standing together for unity, and it was there where we were serving the Jewish community, and he said, if you come for one of us, you come for all of us, and we stand together. So today, I'm here for the inverse of that, for when we stand together, all of us together, all of us can be together. That's the vision of what a world can be. What a blessing. What a, what, a, what a wonderful blessing to see your faces and your presence here in this state house, on this day, in this place, in this nation. What I know, what I know is we are created from holiness. Every single person has a spark of God's love within them. Every single one. Our communities, our cultures, our religions teach the ultimate in respect, 
the ultimate in dignity and the ultimate in honor for our fellow human beings with whom we share this world. I don't want to forget 300 years of what we call the golden age of Spain and the Iberian Peninsula when Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and non-believers, and everyone that was there at that time, yes, in medieval times, were able to debate their beliefs, were able to share their cultural thoughts, were able to share their philosophy together. And if it wasn't for that intersection of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, our poetry, our math, our ways of thinking today would not be where we are today in the Western world and in society as we are. So we have to thank the Muslim community for bringing that into our world. And I want to say thank you here today. So what about today in our own times? I am proud to be one of the co-founders of the Peace Drums, Steel Drums Peace Project that brings together two groups of people within Israel. These are Christians, Jews, Muslims, and Druze children, 6th, 7th, 8th grade children that are learning together to make music for peace, music for coexistence, and music for understanding. I look out there at a place in the world that is both our lands of holiness and deep lands of struggle, and I have hope great hope for our future, that if these children can be our future leaders, we can share this world of peace and hope together. <laughs> Many of you know that I'm a musician and I sing. I wanted to bring to you a piece of music here this afternoon as a way of letting us know the message I have of solidarity with this Muslim community, with our Islamic brothers and sisters here today. This is three Hebrew words. The first word is olam. The second word is chesed. And the third word is yibaneh. Olam, right? Orba, it's the world. Chesed, it's loving kindness. This is an ancient world. It's proto-Semitic. It's pre-Hebrew. It predates that language. It means loving kindness. Yibaneh, we're going to build a world of love. My dear friend, Rabbi Menachem Kreditor, wrote this melody to these psalms. Goes like this. Olam chesed yibane. Yalalai, 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 lai. Olam chesed yibane. Yalalai, 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 lai. And I will build this world from love. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. And I will build this world from love. Ya da da, ya da da, ya da da da. And if you, and if you build this world from love. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. And if you build this world from love, ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. Then God will build. Then God will build this world from love. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. Then God will build this world from love. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. Olam chesed, olam chesed yibane. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. Olam chesed yibane. Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la la. Go in peace. Say Chem le Shalom. We're actually going to have to quickly jump to the representatives. They have a hearing, and then we'll come back to the Imam and Reverend, inshallah. Um, before we actually move on, I'd just like to quickly recognize Representative Lynn. Ruth King, Lyndon Yurick, 
Attorney General Matt Den, and the Human Relations Commission. I would like to call Ariba Khan to introduce our next speaker. Family, friends, neighbors, and fellow Americans, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ariba Khan, and I am a senior at Ursuline Academy. And next fall, I will be attending Drexel University, majoring in international politics in pursuit of becoming a lawyer one day. We are blessed to have Representative Longhurst speak in support of our rally today. An alum of Westchester University, Representative Longhurst was first elected to the Delaware House of Representatives in 2004. It is my honor to welcome her to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So before I get started, you have all these wonderful signs that you produced. If you could just hold them up so that we could see them all. Oh. <laughs> yes. And I hope the drones that are overhead are getting a copy of that. Thank you. I'm honored to stand among so many people of different walks of life, faith, and political persuasion. We are here today to unite with Delaware's Muslim American community at Legislative Hall, a place where we represent all Delawareans, regardless of your, their faith or their background. But before we get started, I'd like to recognize some, or I'd like to again recognize my colleagues that are here today in support of you. So if we can give them a great round of applause. We've all joined together for one common goal, unity. It's an ideal that is central to American values and the inspiration behind institutions like the Pledge of Allegiance. Every day, millions of people across the country say the Pledge of Allegiance from Boy Scouts to Girl Scouts to police officers. And every time we hit the gavel in session, the General Assembly stands together and recites the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't take those words lightly, and no one should. So what I'd like everybody to do is take a moment and look up to our American flag and all of us say the Pledge of Allegiance. And if our young children could start us out, that would be great. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Think about those words for a minute. We stand one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Those words certainly have meaning, but I am a stalwart believer that actions speak louder than words. Quite simply, America is a nation of immigrants. It's ignorant to disregard our history and the melting pot of cultures that come through Ellis Island. The cultures make our country distinctively different. Many people face discrimination then, and we shouldn't stand for that kind of divisive action today. Our country is facing tumultuous times, and our American values are under attack. But we cannot let hatred, fear, govern our policies or our dialogue. Bottom line, our Muslim American friends are Delawareans. They are business owners, and they are students, which we have right here today. CEOs and doctors, they are mothers and fathers, and they are an integral part of the fabric of Delaware. Our individual ideals and values make us unique, and we should use those differences to create a rich culture of understanding and inclusion, not division. We have one common goal. We all take pride in the state of Delaware. We shouldn't differentiate between my God or their God. It's our God, it's our nation, and it's our Delaware. As legislators, we are the voice of our state. We represent all of Delawareans and the issues that matter to them. 
We have to learn from our mistakes from previous generations made and how they treated people who were different. We have to be better than our predecessors. And we have to set the right example for our children for future generations. Thank you to our Muslim American community and their supporters for taking this journey to Legislative Hall. Yes. Your actions today send a strong and powerful message that hatred has no place in Delaware. You have shown in such a peaceful and respectful manner that you deeply value the community uniting together. It's often said that Delaware is a microcosm of the entire country. We have to take that characterization seriously and unite in one common belief that all faiths and cultures have a place in our first state. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. I am Iman Kaba, and I am a grade six student at Tarbia School. It is my immense pleasure. It is my immense pleasure and honor to introduce to you Honorable Greg Lo Senator Greg Lowell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Honorable Senator Greg Lowell. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I love to see all these kids. I talked to some of you earlier. Where are my homeschooled guys and girls that I talked to before? All right. Where do you guys go to school? All right, good deal. Good field trip. Thank you for coming to Dover. It's important that you do it. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk today and address everyone. I believe that we live in the best country in the world. It is a country. It is a country with unlimited opportunity and it is understandably a beacon to the world. The foundation to our success, and it is a success that comes with its challenges, is our federal and state constitutions. I swore an oath to these documents, as those do who come to America to become citizens of the United States of America. The freedom to choose and worship our religion of choice is one of the most important foundations of our country and state. It was our freedom to worship freely that led our first colonial settlers to take a treacherous journey across the Atlantic to America. America would not be the strong nation that it is without the core freedoms that our Constitution protects. Not only the freedom to worship, but the freedom to gather as we have done here today. As important as those freedoms are, there is another American principle that is equally important. The idea that we're all in this together and that what unites us is far stronger than what divides us. Delaware is stronger because of the ethnic and religious communities that are woven into the fabric of our state. And we should celebrate the contributions of every law-abiding citizen of this state. And we do that and affirm that again here today. If we are able to focus on the things that bring us together, our families, our communities, and our shared freedoms and responsibilities, we can move Delaware forward to an even brighter future. And I want to be part of that future. And again, I so much appreciate the opportunity to address you today. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. I am Malika Tavares. I'm a grade four student at Tarbia School. It is my immense pleasure and honor to introduce Senator David McBride. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator David McBride. Everybody, good afternoon. How are you doing? It's great. What a beautiful day. And I thank you for the privilege make some brief comments today but more importantly thank you to all of you for being here to convey unity and solidarity this beautiful building behind me is the most public of spaces in the state of delaware 
It is truly the people's house, and it must always be a welcoming beacon for all Delawareans. Right here. It is my sincere hope that it is a prism through which it is seen by all of you who are gathered here today. We are here today to celebrate our diversity and stand in solidarity with our Muslim American friends. We are also here, first and foremost, to affirm that we all, we are all Delawareans. And bluntly, we would like and be doing a disservice to our forefathers who helped make us the first state to ratify the Constitution if we didn't work every single day to uphold the foundational documents, secret and sacred language. There are a few things more essential to the Constitution's principles than tolerance and religious freedom, and I'm glad that we are here today to demonstrate our commitment to these values by hearing from our faith leaders that spoke and have reflected on the diversity of our state. I am very proud to have had the honor and privilege for 39 years to represent a diverse legislative district, and I believe Muslims that live, work, and pray in my district represent the best traditions that we have in the state of Delaware. As I've said before and we heard today, Muslims, Americans have served as veterans, police, counterterrorism officers, teachers, doctors, attorneys, and entrepreneurs. Some even work here, we met one today at Legislative Hall. I'm proud to work with them and to know them. And lastly, I'm proud of the dialogue we're having today and I hope that this dialogue can continue respectfully and openly as we forge a gather to all together. Let me see those signs one more time in unity. Beautiful. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. I am Mariam Bakir and a grade six student at Tarbia School. It is my immense pleasure and honor to introduce to you Honorable Governor John Carney. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor John Carney. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If I was smart, I would turn around and just say what they said <laughs> and sit down. I think it was uh, Representative Longhurst who said, actions speak louder than words. And by our actions today, we are speaking loudly and clearly. And we as a group of Delawareans, of cousins, will send a message across our state that we are one people. We are Muslim, we are Jews, we are Christians, we are people of non-believers, we are all Delawareans. All across this state and all across America. And as I look out on this crowd today, my heart is full. It's full of love. It's full of pride. I just feel so good to be your governor. The governor of each and every one of you before me and all the people of our great state. We are showing the people across our country, what it means to be an American, what it means to be a Muslim American, 
what it means to be an Irish American, what it means to be an American. Together, we are one. We are here to stand in solidarity with our Muslim American brothers and sisters and neighbors who bring so much to our state. So much to our state. To throw our arms around you, to hope the best for these children in front of you, to show by our actions, not just our words, they are, that we are one people here in the great state of Delaware. It was several weeks ago, after the Muslim ban and travel that was announced at the national level, that we had a rally in the mosque in Ogletown. And we had religious leaders, we had pastors and imams and rabbis who came up like they did today and spoke. And they asked me to speak at the end, much like today. And my heart was just so full of love and pride to be the governor of this state and to see our people, my people, in, uh, in front of me, showing such love and solidarity. I want to thank everybody, every single person in this crowd who has come out today to show solidarity for our Muslim American brothers and sisters, our fellow Delawareans. You know, our former governor, Jack Markell, used to like to say that Delaware is a state of neighbors. And it's so true. We're small, we know everybody. Neighbors look after for one another. And that's why we're here today, to look after our neighbors, to embrace our neighbors, to show our neighbors that we stand with you together. And we will stand in front of hate and fear, and we will be with you when we need when you need us thank you and god bless you thank you very much governor carney for those encouraging words for our community and the state of delaware at this point we'd like to go back to our religious leaders and i would like to call sheikh abdul hadi from the islamic society of delaware and Reverend Cynthia Robinson, Newark United Church of Christ. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Honestly speaking, nothing is left for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to catch you from here and there. <laughs> We're talking about unity. We're talking about one of the most important things. I believe, as you believe, that unity is a core principle of the universe. I believe that, as the Quran states, in, in a number of places, that humankind was one nation. And I will try to repeat the same message that I gave before in the unity rally for our Jewish brothers and sisters. I said humankind was one nation, was one nation. And then this unity was broken by various of differences which the human beings created among themselves. When this happened, Almighty God sent his prophets and messengers to restore back the unity which once existed in the earliest period of human history. It is possible. It is very possible to have unity with diversity. When unity becomes not possible, unity is not possible when the color of someone's skin causes you to see them as less than human. Unity is not possible when you make a person's faith tradition synonymous with terrorism. Unity is not possible when you justify or ignore violence toward another because of their gender, 
because of their orientation, because of their religion. Unity. <laughs> Unity the respected brothers and sisters cannot grow until equality is firmly planted. Unity cannot grow until you treat people in the same way that you wish to be treated by them, then unity is an attainable goal. No hope, no hope can be strong, happy, and peaceful without unity. What will happen if every, everybody goes in his own way? Then the family will break into pieces. A divided home cannot face an enemy. Same way society too cannot do without unity. We need one another. And the best example that I can give today is that we are, all of us, Muslims, Jews, and Christians, Latinos, Spanish, Hindus, every single body in this field, we are like the different systems in the human body. You see them, how they unite to make a complete human being also the same way that if the Jews are in pain, Muslims are in pain. If the Christians are in pain, Muslims are in pain. There is only one race. There is only one race. It is the human race. And all of us are created equal in the sight of God. May God bless you all. May God bless you all. Today we feel we are not alone. We are not alone. Together we can face any enemy because we all know that God did not create us for bigotry, did not create us for hate. We must know each other. We must love and respect one another. This is the, what we need. The entire world is in desperate need of this beautiful world that we recite each and every day, which is peace. May peace be upon you all. Thank you very much. Oh, I, it's hard following that. I'm Cynthia Robinson. I'm the pastor at the New Ark United Church of Christ in New Ark, Delaware, and it is my pleasure to be here today. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. Shalom. And peace be with you. From Psalm 133, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. We can have unity because we are kindred. We heard about the cousins. I think we're more like, I don't know, maybe third cousins twice removed, Christians are. <laughs> Jesus was so far down the line there. We can have unity because we are kindred. We are sisters and we are brothers. We are flesh, blood, and bone. We are emotions and intelligence and doubts and experiences and flaws and questions and vulnerable as all get out. It's every single one of us. But there are a few things that I will not and I cannot share with you. I will not give you my fear. Instead, I will be vulnerable. I will let you see me as I am, flawed and ready. I will not give you hate, for there is no place for it in my heart. Even for those who hate me, there is no place for hate in my heart. Instead, I will be vulnerable and share with you my imperfect love and ask you to forgive me as I must forgive you. What can I give you but my heart? And in my heart, there is justice, there is peace, there is courage, and there is song. Now I'm going to ask you to do something really radical right now. I'm going to ask you to hold hands. If this is a unity rally, 
We hold hands around the dinner table. We hold hands in worship sometimes. But when do we ever hold hands in public and acknowledge one another as family, as kindred? If you're a little touchy about hands, a hand on the shoulder is also just as good. It feels wonderful. Yay. I want you to look all around you. Look all around you. Look at this crowd. I wish you could see what I'm seeing. All around us, it looks like the wheels are coming off, doesn't it? <laughs> and the ground is shifting under our feet, it feels like, a lot of days. When really, you know what's happening? The walls are coming down. That's why the ground Amen. is shaking. Yep. The shackles are coming undone. The lines that divide us are being erased. And so, come on, keep hand, holding hands. Keep holding hands. No, 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 no. So we need to hang on to each other with all this shifting going on. And remember this human covenant that we all share. This is the one thing, the one thing that will never change and that shall not be moved. We are human together. And so I want to teach you a song. He let you, he sang and you didn't sing much. I'm not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> All right, we're going to sing. Because that's another thing we don't do in public very often is sing together. This is a South African freedom song. It's one word. You can do this. All right, first repeat after me. Bombay. Bombay. Ah, Bombay. Bombay. Leila. Leila. Bombay Leila. Bombay Leila. You got it. That's all you got to remember. And what it means is never give up. I'm going to sing it once and then you're going to join me. Bombay Leila. Bombay Leila. Ah, no, 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 no. You're going to listen to me and then I'm going to get you to sing it, all right? You got to learn it first. Bombay Leila. Bombay Leila. Oh, Bombay Leila. Bombay Leila, oh, Bombay, 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 oh, Bombay, Bombay Leila, Bombay Leila, Bombay Leila, oh, Bombay Leila, Bombay Leila, oh, Bombay, 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 oh, Bombay, Bombay Leila. Now let me hear you sing it, Bombay Leila. Bambalela, oh, Bambalela, Bambalela, oh, Bambe, 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 oh, Bambe, Bambe, Bela. Never give up, never give up, oh, never give up, never give up, oh, never, 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 no, never, never give up. Our last speaker for this event is a community activist, a mother, a teacher, a practicing Muslim American Delawarean. Please put your hands together to welcome Iram Shokat. Assalamu alaikum. I should first congratulate the Reverend because she made the Muslim community sing and we are not singers. So, congratulations. <laughs> Greetings of peace to all of you. Thank you for coming out today. And thank you to all the speakers who very eloquently and passionately spoke before me. Their recognition, presence, and support to our cause matters greatly. As a commoner in the public sphere, I speak for us, the extraordinary average Americans, the silent majority, the popular vote, the hardworking, good-mannered, kind-hearted people who hold on to the values of human decency. We are the heroes, 
the world needs today. We are the ones who boldly make our statement, our country matters. The future of men, women, and children of America matter. We will not go down in history as bystanders who accepted hate and bigotry. We will not give in. Yes, today we are standing at a Muslim unity rally. But before today, there were other unity rallies, and we stood proud and strong with them. And we will keep coming back to rallies until needed to prove our point. We are one, we are united, we are strong, and we will serve our country whenever it needs us. And today, our country needs us. If you look at the people around you and smile or nod at them, the reaction is the same. A smile, a nod, a hug, a hello, a thank you for coming out today. Our common belief in peace, dignity, and responsibility to be a good human being does not lie solely in our faith. It lies in the core of our being. Your presence here is a documented fact that you are the torch bearers in the dark times today. You are the one holding and uplifting the honor of humanity. Change happens when common people courageously come together identifying their power. We aren't gathering at every rally or support group It's because it's a trend, but we take on this as our responsibility. We have to diligently work around the cause of justice and truth. We have to model altruism and courage today so that we can leave a legacy of tolerance, peace, equality, and compassion for our future generations. My religion, my skin color, my gender, my identity is of a thinking, soulful human. They say we are different, they assume we will give in to fear. They misconstrue the truth of liberty by shackling us in labels. Well, we are here to say, we will walk the talk of unity. We will spread tolerance through education and collaboration. Today, we promise we will fiercely work towards eliminating intolerance and prejudice. We will not stay silent. Thank you. We will not stay silent because every cause and call for a just, tolerant, educated America is our mission. We are aware and resilient. We are the people of the land of the free and home of the brave. Brave to love, brave to forgive, brave to unite, brave to leave a legacy of an empathetically conscious America. I would end with the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him. You do not do evil to those who do evil to you, but you deal with kindness and forgiveness. Thank you to all, God. peace and God bless. Thank you very much, Sister Aram. Now to close, I want to thank all of you, all Muslim Americans who took time out of their work, of their busy schedule, to come out and stand up for their rights as the true American spirit. And all of those who are not Muslim Americans, but came out in support of our communities. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart I want to thank you on behalf of the United Muslim Americans of Delaware that on a weekday you took out your time and came here to stand in unity with us. Before I let you guys go, I've been told that there's a public hearing in the chambers at the legislative hall to protect employees from their employers asking them about their prior salary. So if there's anybody interested in joining that, it's a public hearing. Now, once again, thank you. Thank your families. May God bless you. And may God bless this country to continue working in the way of justice. Thank you very much.
Oh, 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 oh,